Hi, my name is Hans Erickson, and this is part two in, uh, per, in putting fur on my mouse in XGen and RenderMan RIS using Maya. Uh, we've already prepared the mouse, he's good to go. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is select my mouse body here and I'm going to go to UV and UV shell and as I explained in the first video I'm just going to select the shells the UV islands that I want fur added to and that would be the body the legs and the outside of the ears that way it'll be all skipped on the inside of the ears the nose of course the teeth and the inside of the mouth and most importantly nothing on the bot on the bottom of the feet Okay, uh, then the only other thing to do is I'll open up my XGen window and open up the deal here and I want to create a new description. Well, the way this works is we have a collection and then descriptions are added to the collection. Well, seeing I don't have a collection in here yet, the default one is just going to say collection. So let's go ahead and give these names, and I'm going to do a descriptive name. I'm going to call this Nib, because that's the name of my mouse. Nib, and I'm going to say Body and Fur. Under Collection, and all of my different descriptions are going to go into this one collection. And it's just going to be called Nib the mouse. Now we have different things that we're going to that we can choose but I'm going to choose groomable splines to be used for short hair, fur, and grass. I don't have any other selections that I can make with this so the only other thing I can do now is just hit create. And you can see that that adds well some weird stuff here. What I have now is a collection of splines and primitives. And the way this works is your splines are what you are actually producing and the primitives are merely copies of these splines that are put all over the mesh randomly. Now I have two different ways that those preview that these previews can be put in. It can go randomly across the surface or in uniform rows and columns. And I have to update to show that. And that setting really never worked well for me. So I find that the best and that uh, I find the best setting for me in this is to go ahead and randomly across the surface. Let me update that preview. Now we have some buttons up here. Uh, some of these uh, will work in this setting and some of them won't. But the two most important ones is clear the XGen preview, which takes away all of the uh, copies. And the other one is to go ahead and update the XGen preview, which brings them all back according to my settings. In my tabs here, I have my primitives tab, which kind of controls how my primitives look. And the main area, I'm not going to be doing anything with this down here. I'm going to be mainly working right up in this area here. The next one is my, whoops, is my preview output tab, where I can put the percent of my preview that's showing. If I lower this down to 20% and then update, well, you can see hardly anything showing. Let's bump that up to 50%. And again, nothing's really showing right now. If my density on my splines would be a little higher, uh, that would make a difference. So I'll just put this right back up to 100, and there we go. Uh, the other area that we'll be dealing with is... Uh, doo -doo, and let's go ahead and set that right now. 
I'm going to be working in my renderer is going to be with RenderMan. So let's go ahead and set that. And the next thing is right now my default shader is XGen Hair Physical SG. We'll be changing that uh, soon enough into uh, a RenderMan wrist material and we'll take care of that when we get to it. Modifiers, uh, we're not going to be dealing with any modifiers, but we will be using the grooming tab quite a bit. And this is where we're going to do a little work right now. Uh, one thing is, let's go ahead and I'm going to set this here. If I click this open, I'm going to set this to update the preview automatically, just for a little bit. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is the length. Right now, my fur is way too long. So let's set that length down to, I believe, 0.1 works well for me. And that's just about right. In fact, I might go on the length of 0.125, maybe just a tad longer. And that updates all of the renderable. Now the only thing that's going to render by the way is these little primitives. The splines themselves do not render. Uh, so the next thing we're going to have to do is go ahead and set the width and I can do it with the slider here. I can kind of make them all smaller or I can just come over here to here and I'll go 0.01 take a look at that and that didn't want to update right away there we go and that looks just a little bit too coarse for me yet so let's go 0 0.005 this character is rather small so these splines are rather small and that looks just about the size of the hair that I want but if you notice the hair is uniform it's just as thick at the base as it is at the top and of course hair doesn't do that. So if I go back to the primitives tab and I scroll down I have this little taper slider that if I pull it it gets thinner until I can make it almost nothing. But I find that a setting of probably I think 0.85 would work well. That still leaves quite a bit of renderability to it and I think that's going to work well for me. Okay. Um, the next thing I have to do is kind of determine right now I haven't got enough splines here to really groom with and to because as I groom these splines as I shape these spines splines that determines how that fur is going to look on nib so obviously I'm going to need a lot more density to these splines and that I set right over here in the grooming tab under density and if I take that density up to let's say five you can see that adds quite a few more splines still not really enough for me if I had a hundred I would say that that is almost right. Uh, quite frankly, I found that that was still a little sparse for this character. So I'm actually going to take this up to, I think, 125. And I think that will work for me. If you kind of look around here, you can see how, you know, I'm going to have to shape all this. Am I getting kind of, is it uniform enough or am I missing spots? Uh, right now that all looks kind of good for me. I got enough around the eyes to kind of shape that away. Enough down in here. I think 125 is going to work. Now obviously if I hit the preview here, I'm not really getting a lot here. And that's because when I set the density it resets the density on my my uh, sp uh, my actual little hairs as well. Uh, 
if you want to see the hairs, uh, a little hard to see with all the splines in there. I can turn off the visibility of those splines real quick, and you can see that these are my hairs. And 125 hairs, obviously, is not enough. So let me move over to my Primitives tab, and let me go ahead and set that density up. Uh, let's say 500. It's getting better. Um, let's go ahead and set it up to... Let's go wild here. Let's go 2,000. And you can see that that is getting just about what we want. Now the real trick is, is how is this going to look if we... Now you notice that my window here is getting a little sluggish. And as I pump these primitives up, my window is going to get a little slower and slower. So, but if I go to my preview tab here, and you can see my percent right now is set at 100. Now this only affects how many of these show in my preview window. So if I, let's say, run that down to 20%, now you see I'm seeing less splines. Now, I still have plenty of splines, I mean uh, uh, primitives and all of the primitives will still render but my window is much more responsive now and I stand less of chance of crashing so let me go back to my primitives tabs now I'm going to turn the update off automatically the next real test is if I go over to my grooming tab and I'm just going to collect, take the Orient brush. I'm going to turn on the visibility of my s splines, and I'm going to clear the XGen preview of the the copies, the primitives. So if I take my brush and I just kind of brush it along here, now all I'm doing is changing the direction of these splines so that they're not sticking straight up in the air and I'm just going to do just a some real basic brushing here nothing much I'm just gonna just to kind of get an idea here of what it will look like with these settings okay let's go ahead and set uh, do a real quick render and there we go. You can see where it's just not thick enough. It's kind of okay, but it's just not enough to uh, deal with here. I'm going to go ahead and stop this render. <coughs> and Let's go ahead and take that density up maybe a little more. Let's go to maybe 5,000. And let's update that. Now remember, we're only seeing 20% of what I did. So let's bring this in here and we'll do another render. Now you see the value of my render times are slowing down a little bit so that was the value of changing my render settings so that uh, I didn't have to wait forever and you can see that that is just right now right here you're looking straight into the splines and so you're you're not getting uh, you know you're not getting a good preview but this is where we laid it all down and you can see that you know I think those settings might work. I might up them just a little bit because you can see right here I got kind of a little balding spot here but that might be brushing and I can change that in the future. So uh, let's go ahead and I think 
I'm going to end the video here and on the next video we'll just go ahead and do a little simple brushing and we're going to go ahead and add the materials for this. So until then we'll see you in the next video.